AccuStats Video Productions presents from the Sands Hotel in Reno, Nevada, the Sands Region number 16. I'm Bill Incadola, along with Mike Massey, a top player on the PBA, T PBA TA Tour and probably the best trick shot exhibitionist in the world today. Oh, thank Mike, you, uh, Mike uh, this match between Jimmy Rimpy yeah, and a relatively yeah. unknown George Breedlove, but not to us, we do know George Breedlove. Yeah. He possesses probably one of the best breaks in the world. He really pounds the balls when he breaks them. Breaks they good. explode. And uh, I can probably say that uh, that's probably one of the main reasons why he's in this position right now because of his break. He's a, he's a good player, but he's going to have to break the balls very well and or play very well if he expects to beat King James Rim. Yeah. Yeah, Breedlove, George is a lot like Earl. He, if he gets his momentum going, he plays real fast. He runs around the table, and uh, he's a real aggressive type player. So it's according to how, you know, if he's playing good, it'd be a, be a real good match. Well, he has been playing good in this tournament. He, he, he beat Jay Swanson. He just got done defeating, I believe, in his last match. Uh, Jay Swanson last time, you know, last match, I believe. Jay Swanson in his last match? Mm -hmm. And... Uh, He's, he has been playing quite well. I don't have a flow chart in front of me. But He's been uh, spending a lot of time in Florida. I was just down in Florida down uh, in the West Palm Beach area, and he finished high in one of the tournaments they had down there, and he's, he's playing good. He's playing a lot. you know. He's and for those of you people out there that don't, that don't know George Breedlove, I'll give you a comparison and who he plays like. He plays a little bit better than Grady Matthews. So... Uh, Boy, well, a good thing Grady's not here. I'll tell you, we're, <laughs> he might be out there somewhere listening, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about Nambo, right? Yeah. All right. They're having a little problem right now racking the balls. Scott Smith, the tournament director, is going to replace the, uh, the foot spot. So, therefore, it'll be uh, a little easier to rack the balls. This will be a pretty fast match, I believe, too, even if it's close, because, uh, you know, Jimmy plays at a good good rhythm, and uh, George plays very fast. He probably plays as fast as anyone on the tour. Can you imagine if, if George Breedlove played with Sal Butera? You know what? <laughs> uh, you know what I started to say? Him and, him and Lou Butera drew each other in Memphis. Yeah, yeah. Him and Lou played each other in Memphis. That was uh, with, but that was with the uh, with the shot clock. Yeah, with the shot clock. So therefore, there really wasn't much interest in that match. <laughs> Everyone realizing there wouldn't be any violations of the shot clock. Yeah. <laughs> they did play two 20-minute halves, so they therefore probably, the match took equally as long as they, all the other matches. They just probably played twice as many games as anybody else. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right. That's what happened in that match. Probably. Lou Batteris told me he said he wished he'd they'd play a 10-second shot clock. He said, uh, said. He would, uh, <laughs> he would really love it. <laughs> well, the last, uh, the last feature match between Steve Miserak and Jose Parica, the first the game of that match that wasn't concluded until about 10 minutes after the uh, hour. So therefore, there's, we're about on schedule now. It's quarter after the hour here. Rippy pocketing the corner ball on the break along with another one. Coming up with a shot on the one. Steve Miserak played uh, Jose Perica in the last match, feature match, and uh, he can attribute his win what to his final? strong break and his good safety play. Once again, Jimmy Rippy showing us that uh, he also breaks the balls very oh, well. Yeah. Pocketing a ball on the break, or two balls on the break, and coming out with a shot on the one. You know, all these top players nowadays, if you look at the top 16, top 20 players, they always they all break good. Uh, if they didn't, I don't think you could be up there playing nine ball now. No, you really have to have a good break to be successful on the tour today. And and if you don't have a good break, uh, you're probably better better off either not playing on the tour or practicing your break and trying to develop yeah. it. He drew back a little too far there. Is he going to play safe, or is he going to go for it? Yeah. Well, I don't know exactly what he has in mind here. Maybe he's going for cross side. No, he's playing a safety here. Yeah. And he's going to leave George uh, some type of a shot. It's not going to be that easy of a shot, rather of a testy shot on the four. He has to cut it thinly into the corner pocket. Six ball to the left of the cue ball. If he's able to pocket the four, I look for him to come up with a shot on the six. I do too, but yeah. 
I think he can go straight up and down if he should go straight up and down the table between the six and the eight. He had a, he had a rather full. Yeah, good, little, uh, good thing he hit the nine. The cue ball was headed straight for the pocket there. He come out good on this one. It's going to be a tough safety unless he can, get, can he get in behind it there? You see. I don't believe he has enough room to get in behind the four using left hand English and hopes to stick into the cue ball in that area where the four is. I don't believe he can hit that deeply behind the four to do that. If he chooses to hit behind the four, I believe the path that we'll see the cue ball taking is up toward the side yeah. pocket. And that's, yeah. not, that's certainly not the path he wants the yeah. cue ball to take. Unless he curves it, and then there's a danger in scratching, too. Now, Parika and Miserak both shot mass eight kicks in, in their match. That's what he tried to curve it. But he got behind it a little further than I thought he could. He got a good roll. He certainly did. He certainly <laughs> did. Now, if you notice, the four ball and the nine ball are almost frozen together. If you draw a line from between the four and the nine and to see where it goes, yeah. the four ball goes, it goes to the right side of the eight. Yeah. So therefore, if you would hit the four ball full in the face, it would go to the right side of the eight, and then it would end up somewhere around that bottom cushion, yeah. in the center of the At bottom right cushion. Speed. So therefore, if, exactly right, yeah. if he hits this particular shot with the correct speed, he can come out of it in decent shape. And draw the cue ball back to end rail, too. Providing that he, can, uh, providing that he knows the shot. No, he's trying to put uh, Rimby, Rimby behind the eight. Well, he got a good roll. He got a very good roll. He tried to hit the, the four ball much thinner than he did because he wanted to hit the bottom cushion, sending the cue ball up table behind the eight, so he, therefore he would block the four with the eight, not allowing Jimmy a shot on the four. But he's left Jimmy a shot on the four, but it's not a very good one. I wouldn't want to be shooting it. I think Jimmy might play a safety cross bank at two cushions and try to leave the four on the uh, bottom rail, maybe. Go back up table. Yeah, he can do that. He might kiss. Yeah, there may be a kiss here. I can't see the angle that he has very well. But uh, there's a possibility that he might even be able to bank at cross corner. I don't know exactly what he did try to. Do. I don't know what he no, tried neither. to do there. I don't Turned out pretty good, though. This is no easy shot either. No, it's not. He certainly has his work uh, cut out for him if he expects to run the remaining balls on the table. Not only does he have to pocket a, a difficult shot in the four, but he has to attain a shot on the six after pocketing the four, mm -hmm. which there's no guarantee that he can do that either. Well, but hitting good. it the way hitting he did, good. hitting it also into the eight with the mm -hmm. cue ball. <laughs> Pretty as a pitcher, very nicely done. He hits the balls with authority too. That's Reed Love. He don't slow roll many balls. Game number one it goes to George Breedlove, who now takes the uh, early lead in the match one game to zero. Now, he doesn't slow roll any uh, very many balls. He likes to hit balls with authority, like you mentioned. And uh, I believe on tighter equipment, he'd have problems. But the forgiving pockets out here, uh, the, you know, event, uh, I think that it's more conducive to his style of play. Mm -hmm. First time I saw George play was at the Memphis tournament back about three years ago. They had in Memphis, you know, at the uh, Holiday Inn. Was you there, Billy? No, there's Willie Munson on the monitor. I don't know, excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. there's old Willie Munson. He's and a real George competitor. finished high in that tournament. He beat Nick Varner in the tournament and uh, finished, I think, like fifth, sixth, somewhere around there. Now, notice his break. Look at the, how the balls explode when yeah. he breaks them. I mean, they really explode, and I, oh, how I wish I could break them like that. Well, you can, Billy. Yeah. <laughs> if I carried them along with me, I could break them like that. Yeah, George has beat a lot of quality players, Mike. He beat Buddy Hall, I think, uh, a few times. And uh, you mentioned he beat Nick Varner. So, therefore, he's not the type of a player who's intimidated no. by the strong players of the day. He's certainly going to put forth a good effort, and uh, he's going to definitely make his presence felt.
That was a Turned pretty out shot. pretty good there. Very pretty shot. Very nicely executed. Now, if he can come up with a shot on the three, he has an excellent opportunity to tie up this match. Jim Ripley, a veteran of the game. Very, very intelligent and experienced player at the table. Knows about just about everything you need to know about playing winning nine ball. Jimmy Rippey is another player that come out of the same mold as Buddy Hall. He doesn't give anything away. If you're going to get anything off of Jim Rippey, you're going to have to earn it. He doesn't make foolish mistakes. It's a lot of experience. Yeah, Buddy is always going to be the greatest at that. Well, Nick brought it all you, too. You know, Buddy, uh, every shot, he's bearing down. He's trying. He don't never. I never see him get careless, you know. Buddy doesn't like to lose games. It doesn't even. It doesn't matter what the score is. He doesn't like to lose games. As a matter of fact, a perfect example of that was in his last match against George Michaels. He was leading George Michaels in that match by the score of 11 games to two. And uh, 11 to two. 11 games to two. And he and George got a little lucky on him. And Buddy really showed signs of uh, uh, disgust. He was kind of disgruntled because of that. And uh, George Michaels came back in that yeah. match. Yeah. 12-11. And the final score was, I think, 13 games to 11 in yeah. favor, buddy. But uh, buddy hates to lose games, regardless of the score. He's a he's a great competitor and he's uh, extremely tough to beat. He doesn't give anything away. Jim Rippey just tied up the match uh, by the score of one game one game apiece. Now he now he's at the table breaking the ball. Jimmy Rippey, by the way, has a very good break also. And he controls the cue ball really nicely off of his break. He hits the balls. He hits the balls well. And he, gets, he get, usually gets good action. You know what's uh, really changed over the years, I think it's because in tournaments where I was always playing mostly on new cloth, is the break. You know, when I was playing 20 years ago, you never, you never, I never saw anyone break from the side, side rail. You know, back then when they broke from like a quarter of the way out or close to the center. But now, most of players, a lot of them break from the side rail. Well, a lot of the players on the tour, they like to break from the side rail because, number one, they feel it's easier to control the cue ball. Number mm -hmm. two, they can pocket the one on the side. Yeah. That seems to be a very yeah. common shot Try players try to execute off of the break, pocketing the one on the side. One inside and the wing ball, the new cloth goes. And when you break off the side cushion, you can just about rely on the one ball either going in the side or going cross corner. corner. Yeah. So, therefore, you're controlling the one ball, more mm -hmm. or less speaking. And and if you make uh, another ball and you don't make the one, you usually have position for the corner. Exactly. So therefore, it's really an advantage to break from the side cushion because of those reasons. Okay, now he's left George Breedlove a cross-side bank, which is no question in my mind, at least, that George is going to accept this shot. He's a very offensive-minded player, mm -hmm. and if Rippey pushes out to this position, he's going to say, hey, what is this? Cross side. So he's quite comfortable shooting shots like that because he just, you know, he doesn't show any reluctancy to shoot shots like that. He's going to bank it and kill his cue ball here, and then if he misses, he's having only in rail. Now, this is a very yeah. difficult shot to control the cue ball, uh, Mike. It looks like he's. Oh, he played the safety. Yeah. Okay. Playing the safety shot. and okay, positioning the cue ball very oh, nicely great. behind the five. Sure. Cue ball behind the eight and nine. Very nicely done. If I were him, or if I were he, I, I would I would ask someone to go up and supervise this. Yeah, hit. I would too. Uh, yeah. Take a look, a little he's closer got look a, at it. Jim's got a pretty good kick at it, but it's still not that easy of a shot. And Scott Smith appears on the uh, on the scene. Tournament director, one of the most competent tournament directors along with uh, Pat Fleming. They both do great jobs. Yeah, yeah, both. Make a good team. Only problem I can see here really just, just getting on the right side of the five ball and it looks like it should be out.
Well, he's yeah, exactly. Now drawing this ball here, I don't like drawing no. this ball because you're going to the angle look like the in. angle you're going to yeah. be getting is going to be. Uh, well, you well. Be, yeah, he got a little roll there. Cause I went straight up the table. I tried to, I believe. Or. Well, he got the maximum uh, from his effort there, narrowly missing the five, and he just barely got c came up with the right angle for the five to drop nicely on the six. You know, if you're in stroke and that field is there, you can even, those close shots, it seems like you just, it's like a radar. You just know where the cue ball's going. That's the way uh, George plays. He plays with a lot of feel, and if his instincts are on, he's really an instinctive player. He's not a real methodical type player. As most of us are, I do believe. Jeff, game number three, yeah, when it's you're George in stroke, B. with the lead two games to one. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I believe when you're in stroke, your instincts take over. You're playing better if you're playing by instinct than you are if you're trying to figure everything out by your mind. You know, like the, I got into that one time, the quarter ball hit, half ball hit, and all that stuff, you know. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, you just... Uh, just bother feel. yourself with too much information, you know. It's... Mm -hmm takes away from the field. Yeah, it becomes a detriment to you. And uh, now there's that break again. I mean, he crushes the balls. Just absolutely crushes the balls. Where's he going to go for the bank here and maybe a... S yeah, you look for him to go yeah. for the bank here because position on the two is natural, providing that he makes the bank. He'll have a shot on the two. Possible safety if he misses it, too. I don't think he'll be uh, thinking safety here, Mike. I think he's going to just go yeah. after the bank. Oh, he went for the well, cut. Went for the cut. Which was a good shot, too. He hit it reasonably yeah. well. I'm yeah. surprised it didn't fall. I think had he hit it a little softer, it would have fallen. Yeah, that, that was a pretty tough cut because the water's close to the cushion. And Two ball position in front of the upper right-hand corner. If he gets straight in on the three, he's going to go three cushions around the eight. Pardon? He may go three cushions around the eight here. Yeah. Yeah, I believe he. And if he can, if he can attain the straight in angle on the three, straight in shot on the three, it would certainly simplify the remaining sure would, remainder yeah. of the rack. Yeah, I'd go three cushions because drawing the ball is you got to really. The two ball is really deep. It's close mm -hmm. to the corner pocket, so uh, that's a that's a. An indication that he's going to go three cushions, and he's, and he's hit it perfectly, just about, I would think. A little off angle. He might follow it up and go back up the rail if he has just much angle. Uh, he's going to play shape for the other side, I believe. Four to seven is. Oh, he hit soft and good shot, straight in. <coughs> yeah, he, he was able to uh, pinch it and hold it in shape for the five in the corner. He'll pinch this shot like he did the five, mm -hmm. or excuse me, the three. He'll just hit it softly with a stroke. No, he went to the other side yeah. of the table. I thought he would too. I kind of like them pinching it. Now he's ended on up on a the rail. cushion. If he's straight in, he could be in trouble here. Yeah, I myself would have played that shot a little differently. Yeah, he didn't have a lot of angle. And <coughs> it's hard to see up here sometimes, though. If you're looking straight on, you know, it's the angles. We hit that one good, stroked it good. Very good cue ball speed and also direction. Game number four. Game number four goes to Jim Rippey, and now he ties up the match at two games apiece. Uh, do you think there's a thing as hitting the balls too hard? Too hard? When you break the balls, that is. I believe on some tables. Yeah, I've been on tables where if I was breaking them too hard, I'd, the balls would kind of like come back together too soon or something. And then on another table, uh, I mean, they led up on the break, and the balls would, uh, you know, might make two or three balls. 
at least according to the table. And another thing that if you're breaking real hard, you better keep that cue pretty level. Or, or I mean, you got to watch every cue ball be in the air when it hits the one ball, and you if you don't hit the one, so you want to hit that one ball real good and solid. What do you think? Well, uh, I was kind of wondering, you know, I've I've, uh, I've watched players that break them really hard playing players that don't break them nearly as hard, but yet the player that didn't break them as hard was getting better production from the break, and I was kind of wondering, yeah. you know, possibly that's a situation or, or time when you can break them too hard and uh, actually get less production or be less productive. It boosts the man that breaks as hard as anybody ever seen. <laughs> yes, Francesco Bosametti, a Filipino who lives in Germany. You know, Mucci was clocking their speeds on the break, you know. And most people break about 22 to 24 miles per hour. And he was breaking at like 34, 30, or 30 to 34. And David Howard was breaking at like 28, 29, somewhere in there, I think. Well, that's a substantial difference from sure 30 is. to 34 to 22. For the average breaker at 22 miles an hour, he breaks him at 35% harder than the average breaker, which is it's really amazing. a lot. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, a man today, if he goes through that loser's bracket, he's going to really work. He's, if he went started off today, he's going to play six matches. <laughs> and, uh, you know, George, I think, lost his first match, and Buddy Hall, too. And that's, a, that's right. Yeah. Buddy, I know, lost first his first thing, match. Yeah. And they're still hanging in there. you got to be an athlete to play this game. <laughs> yeah, you have to keep yourself in pretty good physical condition. Game number five goes to Jimmy Rimpey, who now leads in the match by the score of three games to two. There's Steve Miserak just walked by. He's doing good. He's still on the winner's side. Isn't he? Yeah, and we talked with Steve after uh, he defeated Jose Parica, and he said that, listen, I have to stay on the winner's side. He says, because if I don't stay on the winner's side, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, they're going to wear me out on the loser's yeah. side. He says, my endurance, it really isn't what it, what it once was. And when I get on the loser's side and I have to play all day long, it's very, very wearing on me, more so than most. And uh, I really don't have much of a chance to win a tournament from the loser's side. But he says, if I'm going to win a tournament, it has to be from the winner's side. That's exactly where he is on the winner's side. Once again, Rippy pocketing a ball on the break. Notice very quickly the two ball position underneath the six to the left of the table, the left hand side near the bottom pocket. And he does have a shot, I do believe, to pocket the one in the upper right hand corner, maybe drawing the cue ball going around the eight, possibly into the six. Maybe, I mm. said. I don't know. Yeah, for he's sure. going to stroke it good. He's he may have to cut it. Good. Looks like the only way that he can get position is. He, what about shooting into the one three cushions and leaving behind the eight ball? <coughs> well, that shot's uh, there, but uh, he still has to control the cue ball, you know, yeah. to actually get that shot. I, I myself, I think I would uh, try to pocket the one and go around the eight. Okay, now he went into the eight. He still has come up with some sort of a shot to uh, keep control of the yeah. table with, though. He can play a safety, yeah, putting the cue ball nine behind the nine. Exactly. Good shot. So that safety there is much more effective yeah, than the other safety. The right, he's cut off the bottom cushion. He's got him close to the ball. And uh, he figures to come up with a shot off of this safety. 
even if George able even if George is able to hit the two, Rippy figures to get back to the table with some sort of a shot. Mm -hmm. This two doesn't figure to go very far. The seven's in fact this is a difficult two. shot. He's going to have to really draw this a lot to get around that four. Did he hit it? Yes, he hit it. And he got a he got a leave. Yeah, he did. He was quite fortunate well, to see get the, the leave that he did, yeah. but he did get a leave. Jim might make this shot. He can see the two and cut it corner. And uh, can he see enough of it? No, he can't see enough of it to leave him behind the three. Can he? No, I don't believe he can see enough of it to uh, push him behind the three. Maybe behind the six? Yeah, I think that's what he's trying to do. But that's a very difficult shot yeah. also. Speed's got to be up. Yeah. In order to get him behind the six, he would have to hit the two ball very thinly. Hitting the two ball very thinly, he would have, have to have excellent speed to put him behind. Didn't quite get there. He's got a shot at the side at the pocket here. It's not a, it's not an easy shot. Are we on the rail off the rail? Yeah, but it's a shot that you have to go for. Oh, yeah. yeah. Considering the position of the three ball, if he pockets the two, he should have some sort of a shot on the three. Now, very sure. nicely done. Cleanly pocketing the two in the corner, in the side pocket. Has come up with a shot on the three. Now, he has to be careful not to hit this ball too hard because the side pocket will not accept it if it's hit that hard. That's the type of an angle that he has. If he hits the shot too hard, it certainly will reduce the yeah. size of the side pocket. It's like he might play in the corner. Surely I'd play it in the side and draw back. Well, he hit it good. Well, he hit it pretty hard, and he certainly yeah. hit it cleanly. I don't think he has a shot here. Uh, he's got a, well, he might go past the six. He'll go past the six, but he's going to play a bank and a safety, I think. Well, it does look like he has the angle to bank it across side and play a safety. Now he's looking at the possible four, six, six billiard. Care, yeah. But the six is laying a little off the cushion, so that's not a bad shot. He has hit the four very thinly here. Nicely done. And he's come up with a decent angle on the four. But he's Maybe too much of an angle. Yeah. The cue ball's uh, settled in against that cushion, actually creating a much more difficult situation for yeah, himself. I think he's going to try to... He's going for the left corner. Well, if I was to shoot this shot, I certainly wouldn't go to the left corner. If you make it in the right corner, it's natural position. Yeah. Going to the left corner, you know, the shot probably be maybe a tad bit easier, but position becomes much more difficult. Now that hit, that shot was hit good. with the correct speed. The pocket accepted it. A little bit hard, but. Now this is a this is this shot is very similar to the shot he cut in or tried to cut on the one ball. He had a better speed, but the other cut was m much more difficult. Exactly, it was a much more cut. difficult shot, but it was similar. Yeah. So he took care of that shot very nicely. This is game number six. Three three. George Breedlove is now looking to knot up the match at three games apiece. And nobody's really missed any balls yet, you know, as far as any, uh, <coughs> I think, easy shots or anything. They're playing pretty good. Crush. Oh, he really crushes it. Well, he made a ball there, the one ball in the corner. And he uh, can see the one, which will give him an advantage in the sense that he can play a safety or possibly play some type of an offensive shot. That I don't I don't really see an offensive shot and, here. Uh, try to leave him behind the two. Want to cut the one up behind the eight and nine or up in this direction. He's, he's looking the back across side. I think he's asking quite a lot. Myself, I would try to bank at the one ball in the area where the four is, trying to send the cue ball behind the eight and the three by the foot spot. 
Well, oh, th there's a... Uh, How's this shot? I like, to put, I like to put that in my repertoire. That's one time that that, that it paid off for him hitting yeah. it hard. You know, he hits a lot of shots hard, like you alluded to a little earlier. Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, sometimes hitting He'll balls hard more pays balls off in than most players, yeah. that's right. He yeah. sure will. Same way Earl. You know, Earl lets a lot of balls in. And, uh, I mean, Earl's a great player, but he, he shoots with firm and... Uh, Maybe that's in the back of their mind. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe they play that percentage. Yeah, that's right. They designed their play like that. After game number seven is George Breedlove, who takes the lead of the match now with the score being four games to three. And there are eight players on the floor right now. They are. They have one loss each, and those players are you know, on the adjacent table. Michael LeBron's playing Ernesto Dominguez. Dominguez trails the match three games to six, or three games to seven, I believe. And also on the other table, Jose Perica is ahead of Tony Ellen, seven games to three. And on the far table, in a very, very interesting matchup between Buddy Hall and Mike Siegel. Buddy Hall, the master, he's at the table and also with the lead, six games to one. We crushed in that time. <clears throat> The four undefeated players left in the tournament are Johnny Archer, Earl Strickland, Steve Miserak, and the U.S. Open champion, Tommy, Tommy Kennedy. Tommy Kennedy. You know, if he was to win this tournament, uh, he makes a believer out of a few people, wouldn't he? <laughs> he certainly would. I've been a believer in him for a long time. I've watched him play on that Florida tour, and, uh, you know, he practically dominates it. Well, the jury's still out on Tommy Kennedy, but if he happens to do well in this tournament, I feel that all those doubting Thomases That's will right. come to the realization that Tommy Kennedy is for real. He's already did well. <laughs> he, he, Mark Raphael beat Buddy, then Tommy beat Raphael, and uh, his last match he won. Uh, yeah, what was that score? Thirteen on? to three. He defeated Ernesto Dominguez, and I might add a very hot Ernesto Dominguez who was playing extremely well up to that point. I really didn't watch that match. Maybe he did play well in that match, but didn't have the opportunities. Maybe Kennedy just took all the opportunities away from Dominguez by just running out. Tommy's a solid player. Well, that's a tough shot there. <coughs> well... Actually, I diverted my attention away from the feature table, and I uh, was talking with you, Mike, and also I was looking at the action on table number four. And yeah, Mike's playing good. And Dominguez and, and LeBron, and I didn't, uh, I didn't see it. Maybe possibly Breedlove had a safety there he could have played. Uh, I don't think, well, he could have maybe clipped the ball and come down behind, but I think this, yeah, if he made the shot, he wouldn't really had that much. No, he wouldn't have had much at all, and that's why I was saying, yeah. you know. Uh, the guys that are really hard to beat are the players that don't give up anything. They don't right. give away anything. Yeah. Everything you get from those players, you have to earn. And that's what Jimmy Rimpy is all about. Everything that you get off of Jimmy Rimpy, you have to earn. Yeah. He has a lot of experience. He's an intelligent player at the table. Now, George Breedlove, a less experienced player, may give you more opportunities mm -hmm. than you deserve. And Rimpy has given Rimpy an opportunity here that Rimpy really had, didn't deserve. Now watch this shot. Rimpy, there's no, there's no stick behind the nine here. here. Jimmy Rimpy will, will place him behind the nine with the cue ball, providing that he can hit the four full enough to do yeah. this. Now, now Breedlove steps to the table and not really liking uh, the position that he's in, but he may have brought it on himself by not electing to play some sort of a safety off the three ball. So this possibly could be a swing of maybe two, three games. Mm -hmm. That's right. He may have to, he may have to kick four rails or something here at this. Uh, I don't, he can't go two for the six. I believe he can possibly go four rails around the table and come into it. And that's a tough shot on. That's what he's wanting to try. 
No, he's gonna try to spin his bow. Well. Has a hard shot. There. Yeah, he had to put a lot of spin on it to, to hit the four ball. It, matter, it may have been too much spin he had to put on it into uh, Jim Rivery down step to the table with cue ball in hand and with a chance to line up his match at four games apiece. Actually, what he's thinking about now is how he's going to deal playing position for this for the eight. He's, how he's going to deal with it, where he has to get on the sticks to get an angle off of the seven. He'll just float down probably a little bit, playing position maybe two cushions across table. I don't know. He's looking like uh, maybe he's going to stay up and play the seven and draw up. Just as, uh, I like your way better, Billy. I like going for a two rail well, position. This this is a a route uh, that he protects himself against the hook, you know. Yeah. Playing the playing yeah. cross table twice, the nine ball is a big ball there. If he goes too far, he'll be he'll find himself behind the nine. This way, he assures himself at least some type of a shot on the eight. Make sure you don't hit the eight coming back up. No, he may he may be one uh, yeah. one cushion. Yeah. Now that that's. An indication of how intelligent of a player he is at the table. He realized by going two cushions across table, he may get hooked behind the nine, so he accepted the little or even, difficult shot you know, on the eight. Yeah, or he could even come up short on position two, if you know. He accepted a little more difficult uh, shot on the eight to uh, ensure himself of not getting behind the nine. Yeah. And it looks like it worked out for him this time. Game number eight goes to Jim Rippey. He now ties up the match of four games apiece. Well, Tony's come back a little bit on Perica over there. Tony Allen trailing Jose Perica five games to seven. If Jose Perica has a nemesis, it's Tony Allen. I think Tony Allen has the edge over Jose Perica in head-up play, in tournament play, that is. We made the three ball. I guess that corner the ball is going in every time off the uh, wing ball. Yeah, it, it looks like it's going in for Rimpy, the corner ball. It isn't going in for George, though. It's going in for Rimpy. Well, you know, Rip, is, you notice he didn't break him that hard either. He just broke him real good in front of He only had a half a pocket to score the one pass to seven. He wasn't able to come up with the shot. Breedlove steps back to the table. The match is all knotted up for a piece. Where do you play the two? Uh, he might come back for the bank. And if you don't have a bank, play a safety or something. That's but all. Let's see. The two balls uh, positioned to the right of the foot stop, foot spot behind the uh, behind the stick. No, he's hit it with excellent speed. Yeah. Excellent speed he hit it with. And it looks like he has a shot for the side pocket possibly. He's looking at the bank. Will it go on the side? Or? It looks like it'll go on the side. He's trying to figure out where he's Position. going to end up with the cue ball. Yeah, good shot. Okay, the four ball positioned in front of the uh, lower left-hand corner pocket. Five cross table. I don't know. He got a little careless there. Yeah. Yeah. He got to kind of straight in on the five. He's playing at rail first. Well, uh, he may be in trouble he here. Be. He's got to go between the seven and eight. Here. Maybe in trouble here. It looks like he can go, but he has to be careful not to hit the eight here. And trying to yeah. avoid contacting the eight. The eight. Yeah. 
He overcut the six. Sure he he still was, didn't have position either. No, he was a little precipitous when he shot the four. Shooting the four, he had to get the correct angle on the five to drop nicely for the six. He took it for granted, I believe, exactly. the five was at. And I think that's where his problem stemmed from, his uh, inability to play the correct angle off of the five to go to the six nicely. Buddy Hall is uh, running away from Mike Siegel, nine games to one. And Jim Murphy takes the lead away from George Breedlove once again, five games to four. The corner ball has been going in <coughs> Watching for Breedlove. I, believe he's I mean, excuse only, me, for Murphy. I believe he's only hitting the balls about 80%. You know, it's, it's, since he knows that ball's going in, I don't think he's hitting them quite as hard. George is breaking from the other side, too. That's... Uh, They hitting pretty solid that time. It didn't go. Nothing that time. Came up dry, and uh, George Brillo steps to the table with an excellent shot on the one. Two ball position near the lower left hand corner pocket. Three ball in between the two in the nine near the foot spot. I believe he'll be out of here. There's nothing touching. The balls are laying good. I can't see any problems here. Can you, Billy? Well, I don't really see. Uh, problems to the degree that he's going to have to do extra work to get out. He has to make sure he plays good angles. That's mm -hmm. you know, keep uh, his concentration and make sure that he plays the proper angle on the balls and uh, that he should be able to get out. This is a, this is a key shot, the five to the six. He has to get a good, a good, sh good angle on the five. Okay, he should uh, draw the ball here, yeah, short of the side. side. Yeah. He has to be careful not to go into the side. You have to draw it. Well, he, he was too it, careful. He, he, uh, See, sometimes you can be too careful. Sure let up on your stroke and uh, you know, if things I, like if that If you can, that shot there, I like to go three rails, but the seven ball might have been in the way. I like going three rails for... The seven ball was too low. It was an interfering yeah. ball with the three rail position. Good shot. Yeah, sure. well... He's a very good shot maker, so therefore that didn't create much of a problem for him. For myself, it probably would have created a major problem, but not for George Breedlove. Game number 10. That goes to George Breedlove. This match is knotted up once again. It's five games apiece. <clears throat> so if you put his uh, break on the radar gun or whatever, whatever meter they use to... Uh, I would say George SD. is breaking uh, probably around around 27. And just uh, I'd say around 27 or so, because well, that 27 mile per hour break certainly pretty effective. Right? Yeah, it certainly gave him a lot of uh, balls on the break, pocketing three balls on the break. Because if I'm breaking, I got a pretty good break. You know, I break the balls pretty hard if I'm breaking, and uh, he clocked me, and I was trying to control it. Good hard break. I was breaking like 26, 27, right? <laughs> Fifteen. 
he breaks like that every time. Oh, uh. playing six ball. What did he make? Three balls on the break at that? Three balls on the break. I believe his break was more like 29. 29? <laughs> 29, yes. I, have, you, have you watched Bob do that before with the gun? I mean, it's deceiving. You know, you think you're breaking and, uh, really hard and... Uh, well, my the, ears hurt when he breaks the balls. That's, uh, yeah. you know, I rely on the sound of the break a lot yeah. to determine how hard a guy's hitting balls when he breaks them. And my ears hurt when he breaks the balls. And I'm sure the He's balls hurt. hurt. <laughs> I'm sure they do, too. <laughs> you know, I don't know if poo balls have feelings, but I just read an article the other day, you know, that, that plants do, you know. You know, they feel grass and uh, everything. has. Actually, they have instruments now to... Uh, to even detect it. Well, if know. pool balls could feel, they would probably be saying, I hope this session gets over really quickly. <laughs> Especially the one ball. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, one ball. And the cue ball. It gets some abuse, doesn't it? Okay, at the end of game number 11, it's George Breedlove with the lead now by one game, six games to five, and we're ready for a 29-mile-per-hour break. Here we go. Yeah, yeah I think he was about 31 there, uh, <laughs> I tell you, he's pounding the balls. He's really, he's. Well, he hit a good. He hit it so solid. He said the cue ball. It didn't go left or right. It just came right. So he's zeroed in too. Okay, he has an option. I believe he can cut the one in or play the two on the billiard. He looks look like he's gonna go for the one and two. A That's very good did. call, by the yeah. way. One and the it two. Turned out pretty good. Yes. Okay, he would like to draw beyond the side pocket, underneath the, where the where it's for the five. But he has to get down. He's not. He hasn't gotten down far enough. Stop. Just stop. Yeah. Matter of fact, he played it perfectly. Yeah. Now he'll go cross table. I kind of like playing position for the five, maybe in the upper corner here. Oh, if he can clear the side comfortably, then he's he's shooting mm. it correctly. That went up a little higher there, maybe. The Hitting balls nicely. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. notice that shot, that particular shot he just shot, he, yeah. he shot about four of those shots. And every one of those shots he's, he's hit right very well, yeah. very well. He's got a good, he's really hitting, he's got a good rhythm going. Watch him, he just runs around the table and just takes a couple of strokes. Feel his speed is very good. When he yep, certainly good. At the end of game number 12, it's George Brelov who now has a two-game advantage in the match by the score of seven games to five. That's a good shot over there. On uh, the adjacent table, table, Tony Allen just came up with a very nice safety. He was in trouble, hooked, and he came up with a very nice shot. Now back to the table, on table number five, back to the action on table number five, and George Breedler preparing to break the balls. Well, so important making a ball on break. At least you get the first shot, you know, and you can push or whatever. You know, it's so. Yeah, definitely have control of the table if you can if you pocket it if you pocket balls on the break with consistency. See now, there, once again, there's yeah. that inexperience showing up again. He's, he was managed to amass a two-game lead, yeah. and he, once again he played a shot was, that was ill-advised, yeah. and uh, he finds himself he was, not uh, losing the game off of that yeah, shot, he but he's lost control of the that's table. That's right. He lost control. He could have played a good safety there too, Red. So now once again he steps back to the table having the kick. Earlier in the match he did the same thing. You know, he could have played a safety off the three ball. And he didn't do that and he found himself hooked behind the nine. Now he's found himself hooked behind the seven, but he does have a two game advantage. Can he, can he 
can't see the ball at all. I don't believe he can. He'd curve, if he could curve and hit the right side, he might even end up behind that 6-5 and the one over by the 8. This course is a, he's going to jump it. Well, Jimmy Ripley has a 1-9 billiard, and uh, yeah, he's very adept at shooting uh, this type of a shot, by the way. Well, would a one ball go? If the one to go, he could play position for the three and come back up for 4-9. If the nine's frozen to the cushion, and actually it makes this billiard a lot more difficult yeah. to execute. Like he's going for the billiard. Good shot. Good shot. Well, I believe the bank, like I said, cost him going for the one ball there. Oh, uh, most certainly it did cost him. At the, end, at the end of game number 13, it's Jimmy Rippey who trails not only by one game in the match, where he could have found himself, you know, very easily could have found himself trailing by two games in a bad position or possibly even three games by now but now he's only trailing by one game he's at the table preparing to break the balls trailing six games to seven now he's changing his break I don't see why he changes because he's he's only had uh, that last game he didn't make the, the ball break but it seemed like the other times he did uh, well he noticed the success that uh, George Breedlove had or is having breaking from that side of the table, so he thought perhaps he may go over that side of the side, table yeah. just to give it a shot to see if he would have similar success. But he doesn't break the balls Near as hard, hard as yeah. George, so therefore that's probably the reason why he wasn't productive. George is back at the table once again uh, at a disadvantage. If the one's froze, this would be a pretty difficult shot to play. A bank back up the table, and it's not. Oh, he can play. A, it's pretty easy to play a safety from there. Well, I don't know if just cutting the one in would be that uh, that bad of a shot. If it's froze, that's right. Yeah, if you miss it. Uh, there's a wall of balls up there. That right. in the event that he does miss the one, there's a good chance the yeah. cue ball will end up behind the the wall of balls, or the one that's ball right. will end up behind that wall of balls over there. Go real first and you spin know, it. No, so. he's not going. Oh, he's, he's, he's electing to go to the left of the one, trying to position the cue ball behind the five. Now, the, this shot is not that easy to execute. No, it's good. Look here, he got to keep him behind the seven. I believe. Tony Allen just tied up his yeah. match uh, with Jose Perica by the score of nine games apiece. Tony has won his last two matches, 13 to 12. <laughs> and one of them, they shot the eight ball eight times. But you see that shot, Billy? He kicked and clipped the one and uh, ended up with pretty good safety. No, he hit it too soft, Mike. The cue ball that he hit it too soft in, yeah, in the back up respect that the cue yeah. ball didn't get back where he wanted to. But he positioned the one ball very nicely. He controlled the one ball very nicely. And uh, George is electing the kick on this side of the table off the uh, long cushion. I don't know too don't much like about that. this shot. Me either. From as he hits it and stops solid or straight. He did good shot, but he got a. Actually, he got a bad roll there. Yeah. Very bad roll, uh, considering how well mm -hmm. he struck the ball. Uh, Jimmy can uh, can kill the, the shot, or else he could bank it. What about clipping it and going around behind the 5 6 in there? No, I think he's going to go after the offensive shot here. Oh, bank it, yeah. Play position, they keep on in real. He can either kill it or bank it. Uh, uh, he'll probably try to kill it.
Well, he tried the bank and he hit it pretty hard. He was concentrating on leaving that cue ball on the end rail. Exactly. Yeah. Meantime, uh, Jose Parica's nemesis, uh, Tony Ellen, has managed to uh, climb and uh, you know claw his way uh, out of that deficit he was facing at nine games to five or six, and now he has the lead ten games to nine. Tony's another one's got a good break too. If he's breaking, he breaks the balls real good. And There's a bank right there, but he's not going to come up with it. Yeah. Yeah, Jim's got a bank here. If it looks like it's dead on, we can just stop. Hitting a little firm, and balls come off short. Well, he came up. Yeah. Uh, he came out of it pretty yeah. good, Jim Mike. He doesn't left George any type of a shot. George is going to try to just thinly hit the one, dropping the cue ball possibly behind a four-three. You got there. Yeah. This will be a difficult shot here to hit. Very difficult. Very difficult hit here. You might just bunt the four over up against it, but then you got to watch out for the three fouls. I don't know if there's a pocket for the one, so Jimmy, you know, he tied up a three-five yeah, also. I would go for a three-fouls here. Absolutely, or play, or I would absolutely. We have a good combination on the nine, you know, and with ball in hand. Absolutely, go for the three-fouls, or give yourself an option if uh, Jimmy fouls to have some sort of a shot on the nine. You're right. And I think he got him pretty good. Okay, now how do you deal with this situation, Mike? I'd leave it up against the nine. Knock the one down there to the corner pocket and try to, I mean, behind those balls and try to leave it. Yeah, them I definitely li the like your shot much, much more than the shot he's electing to shoot. He's electing to put the cue ball down table yeah. where he has a relatively easy snooker here behind the nine with the cue ball because he has ball in hand. The one ball goes up table. He will then cut off well, the side cushions. He's behind the two, I think. The one ball behind the two and the if you can do this and keep all behind the ball, it makes it a little harder. I, I, I still like your yeah. shot. Yeah, much like better. Yeah, it's much yeah. easier to control. You have your man on two fouls. This is a very important safety here. He allowed the one ball to get away from him. He found see, the he hole up this. there, yeah, he, the he window. Yeah. You see, your shot was just a much better shot. Much, much, much better shot. One in, pocket in, shot. In, yeah, you did. Yeah. In the sure. regard that, you know, you, you were going to put him behind the nine just about 100% of the time. Yeah. Just about 100% of the time you're going to hook him. So therefore, he's going to have to be kicking for the game. If he doesn't mm -hmm. hit it, he loses the game. And when you consider that the three and five are tied up, you really got to go for your shot. Well, it'd be hard to, you know, he had all those balls to put the one behind up there, too. Jimmy made a good shot from where he's at. Now, he, now he's on the, uh, uh, I think he can kick him behind it and maybe stick, hit the one and leave him behind the balls again. Of course, you got to hit this good, huh? Good. George has really impressed me in a, in a lot of areas in the game, you know, but uh, I think he's made a, f uh, a okay. few poor judgment errors, yeah. you know, yeah, like when to play shot. safe and how to play safe. Looks like his safety game is the part of his game he really has to work on. Yeah, he's passed up some good. He likes to go for the balls. He's mm -hmm. His offensive game is certainly uh, to be admired, but his safety game, he's going to have to do something about the safety game if he wants to be competitive on the tour. Or if he, if he wants to win tournaments, mm -hmm. I should say.
you know, if he would purchase a few Accustats tape tapes and take a lesson from the pros, I mean the top top players and how they play safe, when they play safe, why they play safe, how they play safe. Right. You know, I think it would work out well for him. I believe, you know, there's a lot of good training devices out right now, like you got a lot of tapes, training tapes and everything else, but I believe the Accustats are really for, especially for a uh, above average player or a player that it, or anybody really, but even an average player can really learn a lot by watching the, the tapes. It looks like Rempy's deciding to pocket the three in the uh, upper right hand corner. Looks like he has room for the shot, mm -hmm. overcutting it. And, well, uh, got a roll. Yeah, fortunately the three ball took a favorable roll for him and uh, found itself on the left of the corner pocket, and then George not able to pocket the three cleanly. Now, George has an option here. He can kick the three, which is really, really ill-advised. Yeah. Because four even if he ball. makes the three, the five balls in front of the four, or separates the, could separate the cue ball from the four if he was able to pocket the three, he should play some sort of a safety here. You're leaving behind the seven, four. Okay, it looks like he has executed the safety fairly well. I do believe, though, Jimmy may have a window between the four or five with the cue ball. Yeah, Jimmy leaving up here behind the nine and the four on the end rail. Yeah, he'll put the, yeah he'll put the three definitely put the three on the end rail. Try to put the cue ball behind the nine. But uh, his priority, as you notice, was to put the three on the end yeah. rail. He hit it very thinly, and uh, by hitting it as thinly as he did, he wasn't able to put the cue ball behind the nine. A good speed here. Good shot. This. Okay, uh, George actually prevails in the safety battle. One of the rare times that he's prevailed with the safety game. And now Jim Rippey's at the table, and he's the guy facing a very tough, a difficult situation. And he's also trailing by one game in the match, of six games to seven. Meantime, Jose Perica has gone in front of Tony Ellen, eleven games to ten. Buddy Hall is continuing his assault against Mike Siegel, 11 to 4. And Mike, Le Mike LeBron has defeated uh, Ernesto Dominguez. He wanted to hit the three solid there. We didn't knock it at the table and he hit it. A little thin. The only thing I see here is getting on the four. If you get on the four, you're out. He got on the four. And not only did he get on the four, but he also the six broke the six loose of the eight, creating a better situation for himself. Sure. And he's gotten a little straighter on the five than he really wanted to here. Now he's going to have to force it, but of course he's got the stroke and the eye to do both. That's the thing about these pockets, so you still got to hit and They look big, they're big, but you got to hit and in the center. They will jump out on you. You know, instead of uh, it was a big shot for sure George. Sure would have given him an eight-six advantage in at the table, breaking the balls. This match can or could be knotted up at seven games apiece if the referee runs the remaining balls on the table. Looks like we have a tie game at 8-7-7. Seven, seven. Well, in this classic matchup between experience and muscle, it seems like it's all knotted up at seven games apiece at the halfway mark. This is a race of 13, and a very interesting match, I might, uh, I might add. You know, that's really the first shot that George has missed, I believe, as far as, uh, you know, one you're really supposed to make. Uh, you know, he's supposed to make that shot most of the time. Tony Allen nodding up his match with Jose Perica, 11 games apiece. 
Buddy Hall now finding himself on the hill, leading Mike Siegel 12 games to five. Scratch. Jimmy Rippey scratching oh, on the break. Oh, George made two balls to three balls. You know, George really should consider himself quite fortunate to be back at the table with the ball in hand after committing that error that he did in the, in the preceding game. And uh, right away, he's uh, he's confronted with the key shot of the rack right now. It's the position on the four to drop onto the five. He has to get the correct angle off of the four to get onto the five, the five being the, the, uh, the problem in this particular rack. He has to get a good position on the five to run the balls. You know, George... One thing about his play, he's a good shot maker and everything. And lots of times, a good shot maker won't try to play as precise position. You know, he, I think he tries to play more of a general position sometimes and gets out of line. Yeah, uh, I, uh, I also agree with that. But he's found himself in pretty good line here yeah. on the four. He'll go two cushions around the five. Excuse me, the seven, nine for the five. And he hit it with excellent speed. You know, he doesn't have to be worried or concerned about hitting this too hard because he has a nice angle on the five. So he's come nicely off the cushion and get in perfect line for the seven. Okay, he'll play position for the eight in the corner pocket. Or side, he might go two rails for the side. Yeah, he may, he he may just draw a cross table for the side. Corner, I thought he would follow it and go two rails for the side. Well, he's an excellent okay. shot yeah. maker, you know, and if he knows that he can play position for the eight in the corner and have a good yeah. angle to get position for the nine. Now he can get a little awkward playing position for the eight in yeah. the side also. Yeah, you get on the wrong side and yeah. go around the table. And he's managed to put his head in front once again by the score now of eight games to seven. I don't think Jimmy's had a lead the whole match. He's been coming from behind and tying it up. Oh, uh, Jimmy, I think, had the lead early in the match, Mike. Uh, oh, he did? Yeah. yeah. But it's uh, it's been it's been George Breedlove who has had the pleasure of uh, the lead most of the match. Preka just hooked herself over on the five ball. You know, Parika definitely feels the presence of Tony Allen when he yeah. plays him. You know, Tony yeah. has beaten him so many times. Really? And uh, yes. and you know, Parika may be one Great of the player. premier. Premier nine ball players, or he may be the premier nine ball player in the world today, along with Buddy Hall and Efren Reyes. I think he ranks right there. Yeah. You know, and, Archer, and Archer. to have a player like Tony Allen beat you regularly is not easy for him to take. Not that Tony isn't a capable player. Yeah. He is a very capable player, but he's not supposed to beat him 65 or 70% of the yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what he's been doing. And don't think for one minute that Tony Allen doesn't feel it. Also, he feels very yeah, confident, confident when he That's plays right. uh, when he plays Jose. Check Perica. this rack out. You know, the, it's one big thing that uh, it's one thing that George has been doing better here. That's showing up too. Is the breaking. Yeah, he's got a tremendous break. He's Mike, put a couple it. racks together, for you, you know, once and. Uh, And it's actually, you know, one of the main, main shots that has uh, enabled him to, to get the lead against yeah. uh, Brick is the Brick. I guess Brick against Rempe. I got Perico on my mind. Now Tony Allen has won game number 23, I do hill. believe, and he's on the hill, 12 games to 11. This is amazing. If it goes 12-12 again, it'll be three times in a row I know if it. Tony just went 12-12. Tony Allen's walking around the table. He's got that schmirk on his face <laughs> like, oh, you know, everyone thought that Bricky was the favorite. I'm just handling him again like I usually do. Well, and that's the look he had on his face. George is going to go ahead 9-7 to seven here. George B. Love is preparing to shoot the 8 and, uh, and then a natural position off the side cushion for the 9 and looks like he will go in, uh, in front of this match. Nine games to seven. And with that big break he has, this nine to seven lead is going to be awfully difficult to surmount. For Jim Rippy, that is. Talking about how important it is to break the balls well, take, for instance, uh, Tony Allen on table number six, yeah. playing, Jose playing Jose Perica. 
Tony Allen has a great break also. And with that break, he's able to... Look at him, he's out. He's able to not only stay with a guy like Jose Perica, but beat him regularly. Yeah. I agree with you. I think Jose has as much talent as anybody has about as far as running balls, uh, safety play and everything. He's just a great player, you know. And for someone uh, to beat him, they got to be aggressive and break good. They got to have to. They got to really be breaking good. Like George, uh, he's got another out here possibly. Four ball might give him no trouble. Well, he'll just come to the center of the table for the four. He's yeah. plenty of room in the center of the table. Tony Allen preparing to shoot the eight. He's made the eight, and he's again got himself in real good line for the nine. He's going to dispose of Jose Perica. Sure do. George Breedlove is very here. Has a very similar style to the late Louis Roberts when he shoots. He strokes like the same as Louis Roberts. Yeah, except you don't you don't get down on the ball like Louis did. You know, Louis got more down his chin, closer to the right. Skew. He did. He did that. He did get down low on the ball. Louis did, and George doesn't get that low on the ball. But the his stroke was very similar. Yeah. So the break is working for George Breedlove in this match. And now he has a 10 to 7 lead against Jim Ripley. <laughs> Buddy Hall disposed of Mike Sigel. Tony Ellen disposed of Jose Perica. Mike LeBron disposed of Ernesto Dominguez. And George Breedlove is working on Jimmy Ripley. <laughs> Buddy Hall has really chopped down some tall trees on the loser side, defeating players the likes of Nick Varner, Mike Siegel. You know, I mean, those are the type of players you expect to see in the finals, the semifinals. Buddy had a, in the last last two times, uh, by the way, the last two times George Breedler broke the balls. He lost control of the cue ball, having it hop in the air. Yeah, this Certainly. time he get off center on a one and went off table. Uh. But getting back to Buddy Hall, you know, he's really done a lot of work up up to this point of the tournament. He's won six six consecutive matches on the loser side after losing his first match of the tournament. And uh, watch out, uh, you know, he's actually the guy to beat in this tournament because yeah. he, he is playing magnificently. Yeah, he's got, uh, what, three more to go today? I think it's, what is this, the third round today? Yeah, this is uh, the third round. This is a three o'clock round. They played, they played a round at 11, one, and now this one at three. But only for, uh, if he gets, He's got to go from the seven to the eight. To be the only problem, but I don't think uh, I don't think he has any problems here. Stop. So he's gonna follow up. I think I would have stopped and made sure I had a good angle on the six and come off the rail a little bit. Now he's now he's. Well, he's, in, he's in good line. He wants to get he wants to get straight on the seven. Oh really? Yeah yeah. I like going three rails on that shot, getting our ankle around, you know, drawing it back. Sometimes you hit it hard, it jump out on you if you don't hit it dead Yeah, center. but the seven's pretty close to the pocket, you know. He, he should be yeah. very accurate with this shot, considering the position of the seven so near the corner pocket. So, therefore, all you need to be concerned with now is applying a good stroke on the cue ball and getting back down the table yeah. for the eight. Which he's done very nicely. Yeah. In fact, you get a little bit straighter in the morning. You might be playing in position for the for nine side. on this side. 
You know, you don't have to do too much this way. You do something simple, but you just let go two pushes and out for the corner. And if and if you feel good about that type of a shot, go ahead and go for mm -hmm. it because that's certainly a much easier pocket to play than I am. After game number seven, 18, it's now Jim Rimpy eight, George Belove ten. Did George leave? Or? George yeah. Belove uh, actually uh, exercised his option to take his break at this time, but uh, Jimmy yeah, Rimpy has the option also whether to continue play or to wait for George. He asked the tournament director uh, Scott. Smith to rack the balls up so he can continue his play. Are they doing stats on this? Uh, have we seen any? Can they show us something? Pardon? The stats we are not keeping on this match, no. I think Pat got a little lazy this match, and he decided to eat a sandwich back there, and he was, was looking a little concerned one. about the... Mizrak and Karika... Uh, you know, they shot a good, both of them shot fairly well there. Mizrak shot 895. And shot I want the shooting. graphics back, you know. I really want the graphics yeah. back. Get Pat Jr. back. I want the graphics <laughs> back, or at least I want someone, you know, educated so they can, you know, keep the graphics. Because we like the graphics. We like the graphics. We want the graphics. Yeah. All you people out there that are watching this match, do you like the graphics? You we heard like the all graphics. They said yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, those people that are at home, that is, the people here yeah. that are, are spectators here at the tournament that have the, the headsets on. Naturally, uh, the graphics wouldn't do you any good because you couldn't see the monitor. But when you watch the tapes at home, the graphics appear on the monitor or on your television set that you can tell exactly how well players are playing in all areas of the game. We want the graphics back, please. Okay, immediately, Mike... Uh, I don't know if he can see enough of the one ball to cut it into the upper right-hand corner pocket. No. Apparently he can't, so he's uh, electing to play some sort of a... If he could see all of the one, it looks like he could bank it around and stick and uh, bring the one ball around short. Okay, now the position of the two ball allowed him to do this because George Breedlove could not send the cue ball down table because of the position yeah. of the two. The two precludes him from doing that. But if, but knowing George Breedlove, he'll just bank the one cross side. He's there. Uh, I think that's what Jimmy's thinking about. He sees his style and he wants to Exactly. Now, that was a very, very good uh, observation. Jimmy, knowing that George Breedlove will accept a shot like this, feeling that he's an underdog to bank it, says, go ahead, George, shoot this bank cross side. But George sometimes <laughs> fools you, doesn't he? <laughs> look, look what he did to Cuba. <laughs> really good. Uh, I really, you really got to give George a lot of credit. He's a, he has a lot of, uh, of heart and confidence in shooting shots like that. You know, yeah. against premier nine ball players, right. the likes of Jim Rimpy and Buddy Hall and players like that. And you know, because if you miss a, a ball like that, you figure not to get a chance back at the table, at least not in that game. He hit this a little roughly, a little and now the cue ball got away from him because he actually overcut the two. And by overcutting the two, the cue ball did get away from him. Now this, this Mike, I would just go ahead and cinch this ball. I, try, would, I would just try to cinch this ball. Over into the eight or on the other side of the eight. Right. Yeah. Even if you brush the top of the eight, you're going to get a shot on the four. Yeah. There's no need to get all the way up in the air like he's doing That's here what and, he's it, to do. and he's elevating. Because when you elevate like this, you certainly diminish the accuracy of the shot. I sure do. I think you should just go ahead and just cinch this ball. This is a big shot in this rack. Protect that lead. He's going to now, but yeah. That's exactly yeah. what he did, and you know, now he's pocketed three. He's still at the table. You know, he doesn't have that easy of a shot on the floor, but it's very makeable. That's right, and he's got a natural for shape too to come around. Providing that this now the seven ball may be in the path of the cue ball, the two rail path of the cue ball coming around the table for position on the five. Let's take a look. It is, but it unfortunately hit it is solidly and yeah, didn't hit it on the side, side. Yeah. and he's able to come I up with a shot on the five. Yeah, he drew it a little bit. Uh, He overcut it. Yeah. Now that's that shot that I that I said He's that been he hit good. well all yeah. the time. He seems like every time he gets that shot, he hits it good. Looks like Jimmy's got to shoot a bank. Well, I believe he can cut it in. I think there's a, enough of an angle there for him to be able to cut the five in. Can he control the cue ball without 
turn it loose or two rails inside. Or well, he's probably going to apply a little bit of inside English on the ball. Hard. See, it's, it's I tell you, he was quite fortunate. Yeah. Ending up in a, in, in a, in a relatively so. good position after hitting the eight sure ball. Sure was. He could have ended up on the end rail there easy. But that's just the nature of the game, mm -hmm. you know. So Jimmy understands it. He's at the table. Oh, golly. Well, watch the side. Watch the side. No. We missed that in a long time. Uh, he missed it considerably. And, and he didn't uh, have shape. I, I didn't think that. Uh, what was he trying to do? He should have missed it back across, that much, back you know. across for the other side and play the eight over here. I thought he would have become much closer pocketing that ball than what he did. He missed shot. it by at least four to five inches. Okay. George Breedlove is going to eat this up here. Seven, yeah. eight, nine. He loves this. This will put him 11 games to eight. Three game advantage. And with his break, this type of lead, this late in the yeah. match may be insurmountable. Yep. He's got to put him way to favor, that's for sure. <clears throat> Okay, you now he has to be careful, with Mike. He has to be very careful not to allow the cue ball to jump, jump up in the air yeah. like it has the last yeah. two times he's broken the balls. I'd be trying to let up on the speed and a little bit more control or, or concentrate on hitting that one square. Exactly. I think he should be primarily concerned on hitting the one ball square because he's not going to let up. He's, you he know, he, he's going to just go ahead yeah. and break yeah. the balls the way he always does with the velocity that he normally uses. But. Uh, he has to be time. concerned about hitting the one ball squarely. What happens that adrenaline? He gets a little too pumped up, I'm thinking. Well, he he did let up on the break. Yeah, he let up, he he let up on the break. Yeah, he did let up a little so bit. So therefore, he sacrificed a little bit of that velocity in order to get a little more accuracy on the break. He didn't pocket a ball on the break, but yet he didn't jump the table. So therefore, Jimmy, Jimmy Webby, a shot too. I believe he's got a good shot at the one in the corner, and the balls are laying fairly good. He gets on the two. Yes. Yeah. We went up a little bit too far, but a three ball. The three will pop a pass to four, but if he happens to brush to yeah. four, trying to trying to pocket it in the uh, lower corner pocket, he'll find himself out of line for a position on the floor. He'll go down and come back up. No. Okay, now this is a it's very big shot yeah, right sure here. He is. cannot afford to brush to four here. If he yeah. brushes to four, he, he may not only find himself without a shot on the four, but he may find himself behind the That's seven. Right. Roll up in case. Okay, no chance of brushing the four as cleanly as he hit it. Now, what do you do here? Do you hit it real thin? Play in between the seven and nine. Yeah, hit it real thin. Play it center table. Nicely oh. done. He wants a straight and shot on the five. Yeah. Well, all I need to do then is pocket the five, stay in that area for position for the six. Good. Good. Display this two cushions out, taking the skid away from the shot entirely, mm -hmm. getting himself nice in line for the seven, finding himself a little awkward on the seven, but very, very playable. He can draw the cue ball back somewhere in the vicinity where it is now. That'll be very good. He was able to do even better. Yeah. Now on this shot, I like this drawing straight back yeah. for the nine. Yeah, no need to go across the table here. Just soft draw it straight up, straight up the table. This is game number 20. Jim Ripley will now come within two games of the lead. And he does. Nine games to 11. Yeah, he did let up on the break a little bit that time. And yes, he did. He let up on the break, and it could have cost him. But he didn't want to jump the table. Or 24. I yeah, mean. yeah. He, he, he dropped considerably there. He yeah. dropped about three or four miles an hour off of his break. Yeah. You know, I think he's going around 29, you know. Earlier. And then I think that break was just like you said, 24. But uh, 
I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sure the next time he's at the table breaking the balls, he'll get back to his 27, 28 mile per hour break. You know, the fact he's getting ready to hit him hard, he's trying to... Oh, oh there he goes up in the air. Fortunate he didn't jump the table. Oh, he certainly was. I thought he was a goner. But, uh... Well, he didn't leave in a... This is an interesting do? shot here, Mike. What do you do here? You, uh, I see one shot, but you got to hit it. Leave him behind the six and bank the one up behind it. Well, that's a difficult shot. I've been to the behind the three. Down, you know, down to the end mm -hmm. rail, but he's, he's almost straight on the ball. Though. It's going to be hard to do that. It's very, very difficult for him to put put all his eggs in one basket in the sense of trying to position the cue ball behind the six. If he doesn't get him behind the six, he may sell out the rack. That's right. And so therefore... Yeah, if you get one down there close to the two... Mm -hmm. It's a difficult shot here, per se. Now, is this the first shot he could push? Yeah, he could push. But it's, for some reason, yeah. I don't think it's pushing is the right thing to do it's here. hard to reach. It's hard to really get to say it's, you know, even... What did he do, trap it a bank? I guess it did. Straight in the side. Well, I don't know. You know, that, that was an awful was lot to ask him. there. You know, not only banking the one ball is a difficult shot, but stretching and yeah. banking the one ball makes it even more difficult. So, therefore, if I were he, I would have pushed to a position to go for the bank, to go for the that, bank yeah. or to, with no safety to go for the bank and, and give myself a little better chance of pocketing the ball. He's got a chance here to, uh, this is not really an easy out here. That seven ball is uh, over close to the cushion where he's got to come back up. I mean, these balls are laying a little bit funny. Yeah, the the, uh, the seven and the eight is actually the, the problem area here in the rack. That's the problem. And you, you ideally, you want to get straight in on the or, seven. Yeah, or get like where the five is. Yeah, you know. Or, or as close to straight in on the seven as possible. Now with a slight angle to just get off the cushion slightly so you can get off the cushion on the nine, off the eight. But we're well ahead of ourselves right here. Or actually well ahead of Jimmy's He's thinking. We have to get on the three, We have to get on the three, right. <laughs> <laughs> and it won't go down here for the nine. And he's got an angle, so... Uh, Yeah, matter of fact, he may have a problem uh, yeah. immediately uh, getting on the three. He can't see enough of it to draw the ball up. Uh, don't try to reverse it, leave between the fat. Oh, he banked the ball. Oh, no. Well, you would think if he uh, sacrificed the straight in shot yeah, in order sure to get position, position, after yeah. pocketing the ball, he should have been per in perfect line on the three. Well, that's not, certainly not the case. He finds himself behind the nine. So, uh, it's something that's totally uncharacteristic of the way Jim Rimpy plays, and it's certainly the way he controls the cue ball. He, uh, you know, it's an excellent position player. And, uh, I believe he was trying to go into the nine solid, and he just hit a little bit below the, oh, no. Well, that, uh, that could spell the end Ball of in Jim hand, Rimpy. he might go for the nine here. It's dead straight in the pocket. Yeah. Well, you know, I expect him to go for the 3-9 combination because that's certainly... It's laying dead straight. Yeah. I think I would... That certainly fits his style of play perfectly, shots like this. All right, we're going to change the tape. We'll be back in just a minute. Well... Okay, we're back again, and you know what, Pat? We didn't miss a stroke of the stick. You did a fine job. Fine job. Yeah. Okay. You know, this back been, in action. This has really been a good match here. Uh, they've only missed it, like a couple of balls that uh, they were they should have made, you know. And uh, well, let's see the graphics on this. Put up the graphics on this uh, set, Pat. Let's see how many balls actually they, don't they did miss. It. What? They don't we don't have, have the graphics? graphics? No, we don't have graphics. <laughs> yeah, I have to look at the tape and go over it and put it on there later. All right. We have to start I, from the get-go. I get promise going. I won't bring it up again. But yeah, if, if you promise that we'll have the graphics back next tournament.
I don't know if I want to commentate anymore about graphic therapy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mike. Here we go. His last break right here coming up. And he will hit him hard. Oh, boy. No letting up on that break. He let up on that one. No letting up on that one. Look at here. He's got a shot. But it's going to be hard to get on the two. And unless he can cut it thin enough to miss the three. He's got a shot, but uh, avoiding the three ball is a task in itself. He's going to have to hit the one ball thinly. And if he hits it too thin, he'll miss the ball. Oh, he, uh, hit he hit it perfectly. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Look at this. Absolutely perfectly. Nice. Yeah, he's got an angle on a three to go up, spin up. Go into the cushion, spin right up. Now he has to be concerned with scratching cross corner here. Yeah. yeah. Four in front of the lower right hand corner pocket, five next to the four, six, six cross table in front of the lower left hand corner pocket, Perfect. seven to the left of the foot spot. We have to, if he can get on the four to get straight in on the five, all he's got to do is just come off the cushion and the inch and he's. Uh, I don't want to get up in the center of the table here. That's very workable. Yeah. Make sure you don't get the five. Come off the rail about an inch. Actually, with this shot he has right here, uh, he could go either cross table or he can even go he three cushions. Yeah. Yeah. He, he go three cushions short of the side, yeah. coming in at that angle. Yeah, he can do but this is this is good. He got off the rail. He got off the rail far enough to where he can go one cushion cross table now. Well, he may he may be going three cushions. I don't know. He look, he wanted to go three cushions. So at least that's the yeah. way coming he addressed the ball. Yeah. Come into the ball, and uh, you don't have to worry about the side of the pocket. You just want to. Yeah, that's that's where he's going. He's going three cushions here. Plus, he can stroke the ball. Yeah. He doesn't have to worry about hitting it too softly. Make you know. sure you want to get enough, get around the table or get close to sit. No, he's going one cushion. Yeah, yeah he's fine. He's rail. in fine yeah. shape. He's in fine shape. Over. Well, I'll tell you what, it looks like this time the, uh, the yeah. shot making uh, ability and the good break yeah. that George Breedlove took to the table was here. able to defeat Jim Rimpey. Okay, George, very quickly uh, up for an interview. George. Okay, George, uh, congratulations on your win here against Jimmy Rippey, one of the premier players in the world today. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, did you lose your first match in this tournament? Uh, yes, I did, Billy. And now you've won six consecutive matches, and you've beat some pretty strong players to get to the position that you're in now. Right, yeah. Uh, I, was noticing, I was noticing as you were playing that... Uh, you break the balls extremely well, and you kind of let up on your break, the, the, the break preceding the last break. You let up on a little bit. You, you took about four or five miles an hour off of that break, and you kind of like burned you a little bit. You certainly yeah. wasn't going to let that happen to you again in the final break, were you? No, no, I wasn't. <laughs> that, was, that is uh, the strongest part of my game is a break. That's about the only chance that I got of getting up there and winning. Well, that's really modest of you to say that, George. I think you're an excellent player. You're a great shot maker. You have a tremendous stroke. You have a great break. There's a lot of things that you have in this uh, playing in your game that I certainly wish I had in my game. Uh, but one thing that b b both Mike and I did notice in, in your play was that your safety game, I think you need to work a little bit on your safety game. And, and uh, there was two or three times during the match where you more or less opened the door for Jim Rimpey. Fortunately for yeah. you, he didn't take advantage your of it. Break is, yeah. The break is what made up for it, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the weakest part of my game or my safety. That's, <laughs> that's definitely what i got to work on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Mike, you have anything to well, ask? Well, I, I thought he played good, except like for a couple of safeties there. You only missed uh, maybe a couple of balls that you should have made. You know, the five down the rail, another ball. And uh, Jimmy didn't play bad. You know, Jimmy, did, your break... Uh, you put a, a few racks together there from the break that uh, I think is, you know, because the match wasn't, you know, you won, what, 13 to 10? 13-9. Nine. nine? Yeah. And, uh, but you win a game, you know, for the break, there's actually two games because the game you win and uh, right. you're uh, 
You're yeah. playing good. I like to, you, know. yeah. you certainly are playing good, and I think that you have a lot of confidence right now. It shows uh, when you're out there playing. It shows when you're breaking the balls. It shows when you're sh when you're uh, you know opting to to shoot difficult banks and stuff, uh, opposed to playing safe. That's a lot of confidence, and that's good to have mm -hmm. that. And uh, congratulations once again. Okay, you thanks, play, Billy. You play Buddy next. Yes, I think play so. Buddy. Buddy lost his first match too, I believe. Yeah. <laughs> it ought to be That's a good right. one then. Yeah. There's two guys <laughs> who have lost their first match. They've won now six or yeah. seven consecutive matches. And uh, uh, playing Buddy Hall, you got to like, you know, like. I got to bear down on them safety, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, good luck in your round. Thanks, guys. All right, Mike. Uh, once again, it's been a pleasure working with you. Well, Mike. I enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, That's I mean, it was match. a very interesting match. Good, uh, yeah. You good know, match. In, in the respect that we have a contrast, definitely a definite contrast in style out there. You know, we have Jim Rimpy, the, the really the experienced player, the player that really doesn't give anything away, and then we have George Breelove, the guy with the big break, the the great shot maker, the guy that says, "Go ahead, I'm firing at you, and if you're going to beat me, then uh, you're going to beat me by me firing at you." At that time, it worked. Yeah, it, it did work that time, and he was able to get away with it. But playing playing Buddy Hall, he's really got to play a great game yeah. to defeat Buddy Hall because right now, Buddy Hall, in my opinion, is playing the best line ball in the world today. Well, he's playing off a good life's two years. I think Buddy's playing, you know, Buddy's been a great player for many years. For I've known him for over 20 years, and I think he's playing uh, better than he's ever played in his life in the last two years consistently. I mean, he, you know, he don't. I mean, he's just playing so consistent. He's really solid. So, in behalf of Mike Massey, this is Bill and Cadona. Thanks a lot for supporting Acostats. Give Pat a call now, 1-800-828-0397. We're out of here.